Hey guys, Ladies Liberty Stacker. It is Thursday, July 8th, 2021, and I'm finally back with another video. The last one I, I put up was a cooking video, and it's probably been the least favorite video that I put up in a long, long time. I'm just beginning to think that people don't want cooking videos, or at least videos that don't really focus on meat. So in the future, if I do cooking videos, I will probably focus on things that are tricky like waffles that I've done in the past or meat. Uh, my most popular one was pork chops that I did uh, a while ago and that gets a lot of views. But at any rate, I wanted to do something that people would seem to enjoy. So I want to show you my current cast iron collection. And here it is. It is 43 pieces, 40 of which I own, have collected over the years. And actually, I started to collect in 2017, and a bunch of different kinds of pieces here. And um, I'm going to sell three of them in that stack, but I'm keeping all the rest. So if anybody will me messages me and asks if they want to buy something, these are not for sale. I'm not selling them. Uh, maybe someday when I'm ready to get rid of them. But I'm going to be reorganizing my space a little bit here and, and so I can properly display them because I put them, you know, some go in my pantry, some go by next to my oven, some go on the floor, <laughs> wherever I can put them. Now, I don't have a huge collection by any means. Um, don't have a huge collection by any means, but it is larger than your average person that doesn't collect cast iron. So without further ado, we'll get right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the camera down here, and I'll show you this small stack. Uh, adjust the camera. Uh, these three here I'm going to sell. This one is a, an unmarked number five. It's got a, some pitting in here, but it is got an external heat ring, a number five there, right there, and it's got... A, a little bit of ridge line on the handle with the teardrop handle. And I think it's a Wagner from all my research. I can't pinpoint anybody else that might have made this, but it's a, probably an unidentified or unmarked Wagner from early 1900s. So I thought that was interesting and I bought it just because I didn't really know. Um, it was a, a haul that I made off of Facebook. This one here is a uh, number eight. It is a marked Wagner, Wagner Ware, 1058E, and it's a nice skillet. I think it, it spins a little bit, or it just it tends, it has some movement, but it'd be great over a campfire, it'd be great on a gas range, a coiled electric range, or what have you. Now, the next one is a deep, number 10, a Chicago, uh, foundry hardware or Chicago hardware foundry. I can never get that right. That's <laughs> CFH, something like that. It's got a logo, 10 diamond logo, which they're known for. Now, a lot of their pieces are hammered, but this is normal uh, finish, smooth finish in the bottom. And it's got uh, some staining on the bottom that I couldn't safely eliminate, but more seasoning will make it shiny and black. And on the bottom here, I'm going to go ahead and put it down. Somebody got crazy with the wire wheel, but that will also go away if you put more seasoning on it, but it doesn't really influence or affect the ability to cook. It sits flat. It would be a great one for any kind of a stovetop. And it does have an external heat ring, so I don't know about induction, but I, I could use it on my stovetop. I just got a regular glass stovetop, electric range a coiled electric range, a gas range, or, you know, while camping. That's a nice skillet. So we'll put that down. Put this over here. Um, set that down. Very heavy. And then finally, the last one I'm keeping, I've used it several times. I use it for uh, doing bacon, uh, making a large pizza, that kind of thing. The cast iron's wonderful for that. I picked this up in an antique mall. I was always looking for a larger skillet for myself. It's a number 12. I like that it has an assist handle and you turn it over the back. It is an unmarked Wagner. You can tell by the font. 14 inch skillet made in the USA. Now the only problem is when I got it home and I was taking it out of my car, I noticed it had a small 
not sure where it is. I can never find it. It's an airline crack it's right there on the poor handle, right there. You can hardly see it. So I decided not to sell it. It would just be perfect for me to use. So that is my largest piece for my collection. So I'm going to go ahead and stack these guys back up. Again, that's the Chicago uh, Foundry piece there. Not hammered. Wagner Ware, number eight. And I think an unmarked Wagner there. Unless somebody else knows what it might be. I mean, it just uh, doesn't have any characteristics of any other manufacturer. Now, moving right along, uh, we have a uh, number eight mystery skillet, southern mystery skillet. It's got a raised eight on the handle, sort of like Blacklock used to make years ago, but I can't find a picture of one to even know for sure, but everything I've been able to research, uh, they used to make their skillets like that. This was my first piece that I purchased along with that piece and that piece, and I restored these with all the wrong techniques. I was brand new four years ago, July of 2017. I went in a self-clean oven, and I may have used a wire wheel on this one, but I know I used a wire wheel on that one, and I use these pieces all the time. So this is number eight, um, Southern Mystery Skillet. It looks so, sort of like a BSNR. It's got an inset heat ring. I think the black locks might have too, who knows? But it's not BSNR because of the handle. They didn't make handles like that. And their um, ribbed went all the way up here, and they're more distinctive down here. So it, uh, it's got a little bit of hallmarks of BSNR, but not everything. But I love it. I see her either pork chops in there or shrimp. It's shiny black. I use it all the time. And that's what you, if you have to use stuff all the time. To get that shiny black, that's the best thing you can do is, is cooking it. All right, so here's that one. The next up is this number three unmarked Wagner. Nothing exciting about that, but it was the first piece that I got. Okay, the next one here of the first three, this is a number six Wagner Ware. And this one was also amongst the first three pieces that I picked up. I use it all the time. I make uh, sausage gravy, hamburger gravy. Um, I saute uh, vegetables. Just if I'm going to make a quick meal for myself, I use this all the time. You can see that. I wire wheeled this. I use a self-cleaning self oven on this. And it has a little bit of movement, but this is just one of my best cookers. Look at that. Just beautiful. Nice shiny black. If you want to see how I did this one, you can go back and it's July 2017. Uh, I had a, a two-part video of how I stripped these. And I did everything you shouldn't do on these. But you, as you can tell, I didn't ruin the structure of the metal. And it's just gorgeous. I just There was some rough parts on it, on, on smooth, and I wanted to smooth it out. But it's just beautiful. I love it. And uh, so that's my Wagner number six. My mystery uh, Southern Skillet number eight. And then I have some other little number threes that I managed to collect. Uh, this one is a three-notch lodge. You can see the three there. And I hardly ever use them, but if I were going to make an independent, like a independent dessert or a meal for a number of people, I've got five of these, probably should have one more. This one is a number three. A large block logo Griswold. I love this one. And uh, if I'm doing burgers for different people, maybe meat burger, salmon patty, different, it'd be nice to separate out the skillet so you don't have the fish next to something else. I'm allergic to fish, and that would be the reason to keep those separate. This one here is actually labeled a number two, made in Taiwan. I just picked this up, but it's got a deeper sidewalls. And it's an Asian skillet. A lot of times they'll say made in Taiwan. The font is bigger than Wagner. And you'll see sometimes these little A's, little X's. Those are X's on there. I don't know if that, that's a mold mark or what have you. But a lot of times on the Asian skillet, you'll see a thumb rest with, it looks like lines across it, like a menu uh, button, button that you see in your computer screen. But this one is a great cooker. And then I have a number three. This one is a marked Wagner Ware. So I've got uh, no need for more number threes, but the model 1053. So 
those are my number threes. And then, uh, moving right over, next up is a uh, square Wagner. This is a 1218 Wagner. And you can always tell because it has a thumb rest there. You can pick it up easily. I got this off of eBay. I uh, stripped it and finished it. Got a decent price on it, but it's eBay, so I paid a little bit more than I'd pay in the wild. You don't find these too often. The other one I found was at a barn sale back in 2017. I think I paid 8 bucks for it. I paid a little bit more on eBay for this, but it's a nice square skillet. And on the back, you can see the Wagner Ware. It's 1218, a little bit of pitting there, you can see, but it's a square skillet. You can always recognize the font, and then the handle, and then with Wagner, they have a mold, or shift mark, mold mark there. Uh, you can hardly see it, it has a C on it. But I actually use this one to make desserts. I put parchment paper in there, so I don't even have to deal with uh, greasing it down. Of course you could. But it's so much easier to put parchment paper in there. I cut it. You can't see any knife cuts at all. I use it all the time for that. Then next year, I got this from a Facebook. This is a Modern Lodge uh, bacon press. This comes in handy when you're doing a lot of pork bacon because it tends to curl up a lot. Turkey bacon doesn't curl up, but this does. This will keep it nice and flat, cook it more quickly. And basically, I just had to season it and put it together when I got that. Okay guys, um, on, onward, these are my Egg McMuffin pans. This was a uh, Nestle promotional pan in 2019. I picked up for a dollar at Savers, my local thrift store. And this one was a gift from a friend. He saw it, thought of me, because he knew I like cast iron, and it's a small little skillet. And I, those are great when I want to make Egg McMuffins at the same time. These are a go-to that I use often. Uh, next one is a small logo number five Griswold very smooth cooking surface on this one and it is a small block logo you can see that there and next up this is a real special to me it's a Waz Wapak and it's a I think it's an eight but it's a little smaller than your typical eight and this was a trade that I made with Brian P one of my loyal viewers and it's a 101C and I just gave it a good cleaning when I got it because the seasoning was so wonderful on it it's quite heavy but it's great for bacon it's great for scrambled eggs it's great and the sides are a little bit little bit deeper over two inches so I can uh, cook chicken or things like that in there and I've got a couple of lids I can also put over that um, but anyway I love that that skillet that's wonderful it sits nice and flat and moving on, we have a number nine, American number nine Griswold waffle iron. This was a uh, find I had. The base was, I think that was the base that was, I'm trying to remember now. No, that was another waffle iron. But this one here was purchased in Amish country, I'm, and we're at my part of the country. And it needed to be refinished. It was, I think I paid like, these go for crazy money, but I think I paid like 80 and totally redid it, did a video uh, restoring it. Also did a video making waffles in it. And it does a really great job. And it's larger, so it takes a little bit longer to make waffles. The typical size is an eight. Nines are not as common as eights, but it just looks fantastic in great shape and I just stripped it and there it is Griswold American number no. nine waffle iron now over here I've got my also go to pan this is a fake number no. four Griswold it's a recast as you can tell there was a large block logo there but they used a number no. four Griswold to, as a as a, a mold for this particular skillet the skillet works it has no value to it but I picked it up anyway because I didn't know what it was when I first saw it, and I look at that as a uh, learning experience for me and a tutorial uh, for my viewers. So I use that to make sandwiches or a small uh, cheese sandwich or what have you. It's a perfect size for that. Uh, next is a number six, a Griswold small block logo. 
Got this for free at a, at a flea market because I told the vendor that there was a small crack. You can see right there by the handle. He didn't realize it had a crack, and I said, oh, what's that, a crack? So I got it for free. So I went ahead and stripped it. And it's other than that, it's like a perfect skillet. Works great. Scrambled eggs for myself, sautéed vegetables, that kind of thing. Uh, this one is a um, number seven small block logo Griswold. And it had a lot of warts on it when I first did it, so I stripped it again and with a little patience, soaking longer in lye, scrub, lye, scrub, maybe a little vinegar, scrub, lye, got it all mostly off. It is, uh, it was always a nice pan to use. I just didn't like the way it looked on the back. It's super smooth here in the um, cooking area. It's great for omelets. My go-to pan for omelets. I will sometimes switch it up with this one. This is a saute. Uh, it's a modern lodge black lock, black lock skillet. I like the design. The handle stays really, really cool compared to traditional cast iron. It's very light. It's a little larger, can do a little bit more. But I got it not only for the qualities, but also for the design in the back. Really like the design in the back. Not to mention it has a nice assist handle. Picked this up a couple of years ago, two, three years ago when they first came out. It's got the sloped sidewalls, which makes it easy to slide out vegetables, which I do like. And then here is my number nine Wagner. It's either chrome or nickel plated. I believe it's nickel plated on the outside, the handle, the sidewalls in the back. And it makes, it has a little bit of movement, but it's a great baker. I've baked uh, cobblers in there. You can, uh, you know, cheesecake, whatnot. Um, and lately I've done meatloaf in this pan. It's just perfect for that. And it cuts the cooking time. If you take a traditional pan, a meatloaf pan, you have to put it in there for an hour and a half. With this skillet, I 45 minutes to an hour tops and it's done. Uh, this is super smooth. It's all cast iron inside, just chrome plated or uh, nickel plated. I think it's nickel because it has a bronzy color to it on the outside. One of my favorite pans. So we'll put those back. And the black lock is, is nice and light for modern lodge. Modern lodge is usually very heavy. So anyway, there's that. And then moving right along down here is a chicken fryer that I picked up in an antique store. Got it out of the lie bath, and little did I know, there's a lot of pitting on the bottom, but I really didn't care. I was just going to use this for chicken. It's got high sidewalls here. And uh, it was a Wagner, based on comments in a Facebook group. External heat ring, I really liked it. And you have like a donut hole type of uh, uh, the handle. And then, of course, you have your flat um, flattened area that goes into the uh, sidewall there. Unfortunately... I had a little bit of a crack. Oh, it's by the handle here. Right there. Uh, you can see it better here. Right there. So I can still use it. Um, no big deal. Um, but I haven't yet, but it is a great chicken fryer with a lid. I use this lid for a lot of things. This lid comes in handy. It came with the piece. It's a basting lid. And it works just fantastic, so, and it has a little uh, mold mark right there. But a nice Wagner lid. And then I got another lid. It's a little bit larger. You can see there, this one's larger than that one. That's about a number eight. This is a number nine. It's a Griswold. A Griswold, number nine. Uh, tight top Dutch oven. It'd be worth about a hundred bucks. Uh, if it weren't cracked, but it is cracked, you can't see it so much on the um, top, but if you flip it over, and I picked this up for next to nothing at a flea market because it was cracked, but I figured I'd take a shot at it. Cracks don't make them so, um, you know, not usable as a lid. It still does a purpose for a lid. It keeps your food moist, healthy to steam food, and it has a really neat design in there. You could actually use it for display. It has some pitting going on. The person that owned it really abused it. It's really too bad. But I cleaned it up as best I could. And move that over there. Then these are my stargazers. Very heavy. Uh, that's a 10 and a half inch or a number 8. Uh, the other one is a uh, 12 inch or comparable to a number 10. 
They're very heavy. They're good if you want to sear steaks and things like that. They're hard to hold seasoning. It's very smooth. So they, they uh, I think if I season or cook with it a little bit more, it'll release better on the pan. I'm not real thrilled with them. They're heavy. Um, but I did like the design of the back or the bottom. You can see that there. Stargazer cast iron. It tells you the size, the year, and everything it was made. Made in the USA. I like the handle. The handle is wonderful. Makes a great spoon rest. And the assist handle makes it easy to use. These are great bakers. I mean, there's a lot of things you can use them for uh, with their features. My only complaint is it doesn't hold seasoning real well because of the ultra smooth surface. So you still need seasoning to make them non-stick. So we're working on those. Um, anyway, there's the Griswold lid that works just great even with the crack. Uh, moving right along, we have some corn stick pans, one larger, one smaller. This is a marked um, crusty cob. Let me see here. You can see it on the back. Crusty, rusty corn cobs. That's a crusty corn cobs. That's right. And it's a Wagner ware, and it's got a um, little cross logo right there. And it's a 19, dated July 6, 1920. I don't know what the value of those are, but I decided to keep it because I could use it and make cornbread, which I did about three Thanksgivings ago when my son hosted. Uh, here's a smaller one. It's a Wagner Ware also. And it says Made in the USA. So it was probably in the 1960s, 50s or 60s. And it says Wagner Ware up there. And these are kind of tricky to season also, but they turned out great. And I've only used them once or twice. You just don't make cornbread all the time. And me being on a keto plan now, I'm staying away from carbs and breads and all that kind of stuff. Now, these are two muffin pans. These are real small. Then this one here was the one that uh, Brian P. gifted me with. He had one of these that needed to be seasoned and stripped and all of that and so I did a video showing how to do it. I got the tools to do it. This is an old antique Erie. This is a real nice one, real rare. You can see, I'll put it here so you can see better. You can see the Erie right there and it's a number 10. You can see that right there and this one came out super great. I still need to use it, but now I'm on a keto type of diet plan. It works fantastic, and I can use this cast iron to cook a lot of the meats and fats. I'm going to try to make a keto-friendly biscuit to cook in this one. But, but I want to show you guys something. Uh, with the seasoning that I did on this and the tools I used, I used makeup sponges and a longer wire brush. You can look how, much, how nice it looks compared to this one where you still show little circles at the bottom. I'm, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to bake with that. But this one, it came out so much better because of the tools. It was still tricky to do. It was still tough to do. And there's nothing that I would want to do again. But you can see that they're bigger. They'll make nice muffins. And special tools can make all the difference when seasoning oddball pieces like this. So this one, I'm not sure what it is. It has Made in the USA on it. It might be an unmarked Wagner or BSNR. I don't know. It has Made in the USA right in the middle. I could look it up. I remember what it was at one point. But this one is just wonderful. And like I said, Brian gifted me with that last year in 2020. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that one over. Next up is a Dutch oven, number eight, BSNR. And there you can tell by the irregular dots on that. All muffins. I'm not sure what kind of pan it is, but I didn't have the special tools when I seasoned this one that I did when I seasoned this one. This is an, an Erie, a 1948 Erie, number 10. You can see that there. And these are larger muffin, muffin cups. They call that a, I'm trying to remember what, it, there's a nickname for this. But he gifted this to me because it needed to be seasoned, and he wanted me to show everybody how to do it. So there it is, very clean. I had a long wire brush. I had makeup sponges that I could use to um, get off the old seasoning, and then put the new seasoning on. Uh, these are really, really hard to do. 
Um, but that's probably from the early 1900s, that eerie or late 1800s. It's an antique. And they're quite valuable, especially redone like that, because no one wants to do it. I'm going to put this down. Uh, this is hard to pick up here. This one here. Ah, I'm going to pick it up. It's quite heavy. But you can see the difference, guys. Between this one, you can see how not having the right tools left a little bit of old seasoning there. It's functional. I made muffins with it. They were very good, like dinner, dinner rolls. But this one just looks so much better. I'm going to make it some sort of a keto muffin, like with eggs in it and cheese, or something for a go-to meal that I can maybe freeze, heat and eat. I think this would be the perfect uh, pan to do it in. There's also keto-friendly muffins, like blueberry muffins and things like that I could make in here. So I look forward to what I can do with that. I'm not sure what this one is. That one's an Erie, and it precedes the Erie Griswolds that, that you see also. This one might be a BSNR or a Wagner. I'm not sure. I used to know what it was, but I, I'd have to look it up. But somebody would maybe know, leave it in the comment below. Okay, moving on. I've got an, a four-quart number eight Dutch oven. Uh, this is a BSNR. You can tell where the irregular dots on underneath the lid there. Uh, I found this at an estate sale. And I'll put the lid over here. Um, and it has a trivet, uh, you know, down here, but, but it didn't come with that. I pulled this from one of my lodge sets. I thought these work great to let the fat drip. And of course, this is the bottom. Very smooth. It is a BSNR Birmingham stove and range out of Alabama. And it's the only, actually the only piece I have BSNR currently. And this one here, you can see it's an 8R. And it's got the bale handle, which a Dutch oven really should, just in case. But uh, I've used that for roasts. It makes great like, pork roast in the fall. and uh, But not tomato-based soups, which is why I bought a Le Creuset 7.25 Dutch oven. This thing is great for chili, for tomato-based sauces and stews. And uh, there it is, made in France. Eat it full enamel on the inside. It's all cast iron now, which is even heating and all of that. This is a wonderful, wonderful Dutch oven. I love it. And I use that, like I said, for tomato-based things. Because you tomato-based, if, if you let it simmer in there, can take off your seasoning with the acid in the uh, tomato sauce. Next up is another black lock. This one is an 1896 griddle. I used it once. They're a pain to clean. Um, it's great if you want the fat to drip down on keto. It really doesn't matter if you ingest a little extra fat. Actually, studies later studies have indicated that the more fat you have in your body, the less saturated fat your uh, your liver has to make. Kind of crazy, but. Anyway, I don't use that too much. Uh, moving along, we have a number eight. This was the first Griswold that I bought for my own use back in 2017 from a an local antique mall. Has a little bit of pitting on the underside. It's not the most perfect uh, Griswold that I've ever seen. I've sold ones that are a lot nicer than this one, but this is nice and black because I've used it quite a bit. You can see that there. It's got an extremely smooth cooking surface. I actually used it this morning to bake scrambled eggs, or make scrambled eggs for hubby and myself. That's a great pan. I've used it to make mac and cheese, a brownie dessert, all kinds of things. You can, there's endless uses for these things. That is a wonderful pan, and I bought that back in 2017. Here's another one. It's a chicken fryer, or Wagner Ware. It doesn't have a lid, but it's a 1088E. Got this. I think maybe at the same shop, I'm trying to remember. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, haven't used it in a while, probably should rotate out your stuff, but you can see if you take care of it and have your, your seasoning on it, you use the right kind of dried seasoning, this stuff doesn't get gummy over time. But this is a nice Wagner chicken fryer, it's got a little assist handle up here. And um, I bought one. Anyway, I'd bought another one of these at a flea market for five bucks, and I should have checked it for cracks. It had a crack, so I got rid of it. 
Thankfully, I still had this one. And these are really nice pots, or uh, cast iron pans. Wagner Ware Sydney O, 1088. Uh, next up is a number five Wagner Ware. One of the first ones uh, I got when I was collecting. Got this in an antique shop. Uh, has a nice milled finish. You can kind of see it close up, and it moves a little bit. Not a whole lot, but it it works nice. I I don't use it too much, but it's um. It's a nice black iron. And then another one that was kind of neat, I picked this up for, oh, maybe it was five bucks. Maybe it was a buck. It was really cheap. At my favorite antique mall in the area. It was one of those Cracker Barrel specials. And you can't, can't even get these. These are pretty rare right now. A square skillet that you, traditionally you could get in the Cracker Barrel store. But I really liked them just to have. I haven't used it to cook anything yet, but I really kind of think that's neat. I'm going to have to get something to display this stuff on. Okay, moving up. Next. Next is a griddle I got from an auction on eBay for uh, myself to make pancakes and quesadillas and pizza. This is a nice big one. It's a Wagner. It's 11 and 1 quarter inch, which is a little bit bigger than most of the ones you'll see. Nice assist handle there. Um, you can't see it, but there is a milled finish, but I think somebody might have wheeled this at some point. Doesn't matter to me. I'm just, you know, it works great for, uh, you know, fried, you know, uh, fried cheese sandwiches or grilled cheese sandwiches and that kind of thing. Uh, pancakes, you can make keto pancakes. <laughs> but anyways, here is a Wagner Ware. It's just a very nice shape skillet. And it says there 11 and 1 quarter inch. It's a little bit bigger. Made in the USA. Really like that one. Um, very smooth. Okay, and then finally I, I went over. So the, the black lock griddle I wasn't a fan of, but some of the lodge, modern lodge does come in handy. Uh, this is a, my first cast iron piece that I picked up, uh, period. Back in 2016, I needed something for, I was more into prepping back then. I wanted something that was indestructible, so this is a Walmart special. Uh, I don't know, 1920 bucks, something like that. I don't know if I got it online, maybe I got it at Walmart or Amazon, one of those places. But it was so rough, so I did take, I know you're not supposed to do this, but I did take a, an Avanti sanding disc, and I just made this really, really smooth. And it's still a heavy skill. It's great for pizza. It's great for searing things. It's not going to warp. It sits flat, but it's very heavy. It's a number 10. And But I made the surface super-duper smooth. At least for me, but if it, if, I, if I had left the pebbly surface, it's still over time as the seasoning fills in would be super smooth for cooking as long as you cook properly, allow it to heat up, and add adequate fat or uh, seasoning. You know when you uh, cook with this fats, etc. But yeah, I really like this one, uh, Modern Lodge, for uh, larger dishes, and um, it's just a super sturdy skillet to have in your collection. Uh, what I don't want to mess up my finer pans, uh, like the ones I'll show you later in the video, this is a go-to, uh, you know, and I like the way it looks much better after I sanded it down. You're not supposed to do that, but with non-collectible like this, you know, whatever. I did, and that's fine. I did the same thing with this one. This is also a Modern Lodge. It was a little smaller. Um, you can probably still find these out in the supermarket, whatever. My local grocer has some of these cast iron skillets. It, I think it's a number eight. Um, it would be on the back here. Before I knew what I was doing, I picked this up at an antique mall too. It says 8SK, which means in number eight. Made in the USA. It's got a, you know, just... Um, an internal heat ring so to speak but I also smoothed it down so it's super duper smooth it'd be great for a couple of uh, strip steaks uh, pork chops it's nice and thick the one thing I have to say about the thicker cast iron they're heavier 
Uh, the assist handles are absolutely great, but they don't warp as easily. You can sear at medium-high temperatures in here without damaging the skillet. And they also retain their heat better if you're done cooking the food. You take it off the burner and you want to keep it warm. Maybe put a lid on it. It'll keep it nice and warm longer than maybe a thinner skillet would. So there's pros and cons of everything. But yeah, these two are super fantastic. This one is an unmarked Wagner. Uh, it just says very, the font is very, very uh, fine, small there. It says uh, an eight and a half inch skillet, I think, made in the USA. It's a little bit of a spinner. It's got a nice milled finish, but you can't see it. It's real old. But like I said, it's very smooth. I make a lot of my baked items in this. Um, you can bake, uh, you know, a chocolate cheesecakes, chocolate cake. Uh, just, you know, cobblers and things like that. It's a little smaller, so when the recipe doesn't call for a larger pan, this one comes into play instead of my nine Wagner over there. But these are uh, my go-to. I keep them in my pantry because they stack up nice. i got some in my pantry. I've got some on my countertop. It's just nuts. I need to find a... I need to kind of redo my dining room so I can display them better. But these are... You know, they're not collectible, but they are very useful at, at my house. All right, I will be back. For those three, uh, nice, shiny, and black. And the final two, these are probably my most prized ones. Um, I'm not sure which one is uh, to start with. I'll go ahead and show you this one. This is a number 10 large block, large slant logo Griswold see that there Erie and it's not the Erie PA Erie PA USA it's the older Erie model 716 a with a nice heat ring to it and it's got just beautiful color to it and very smooth I've seasoned this four or five six times I've never used it I just love to look at it I'm sure it will cook just fine, but these, I, I found one, uh, a friend of mine actually found one, I bought it off of him, and I redid it, stripped it, restored it, reseasoned it, and it sold for 350 bucks. These things go for crazy money. This one, <laughs> I only paid $45 in an antique mall, and it was in really good shape, didn't have rust on it didn't have a bunch of crud on it so it was really easy to strip that was back in 2018 I think so I've had it for a while but I like it and no one better ask me to sell it because I'm not ready to sell this one I love it if nothing else I like to look at it and finally last but not least I think you guys might have remember me showing this one this is an Erie uh, with the star maker a star series it's a number two Erie with the quotes and it's an 8F, and again, it has one of those ripples, like the other one I showed you, uh, the, the Wagner over here, the unmarked Wagner. And it's got a little ripple, which is not a crack. At first, I thought it was a crack. It's just the way they uh, made these pans. Extremely light, and here is the same kind of handle that my Southern Mystery skillet had, so who knows who made that? <laughs> who knows who? But um, anyway, this is a wonderful pan. A uh, little rough surface here on the edges. I'm not probably because of the casting. It's not because of crud because I got it all off. Nice pour spouts. Very thin though. This is light. This is probably about three three pounds or less. Two pounds, five ounces maybe. I mean, you can just. It's so easy to lift. That's why some people like the vintage cast iron. It's easier on their hands. But yeah, I love this pan, and this one is uh, goes for, uh, this would probably be $250, $300. I don't know. i got to check the prices. But uh, the longer these go out of circulation and the more time goes on, as long as people are liking cast iron, uh, these continue to go up in value. So I almost consider them an investment. I haven't used that one either. Uh, those are my favorite two pieces to look at and just, you know, because I'm not much of a collector of things. I've never really collected anything all my life, really. Um, and the other pans I use for cooking all my favorite things. So 
Anyways, uh, please give a thumb up if you like videos like this or want to see, you know, and let me know what you'd like to see in a future video. I'll leave a comment or question below. Again, give me a thumb up. Please sub up my channel to see more. I appreciate your support and uh, appreciate you watching. And so I'll say thanks and go make it a great day.